And then I'm going to bounce it over to Bree. Thanks, Bree. Hi, everyone. Um, as she said, my name is Bree Charles, and I work in the Office of Admissions at GW. I work primarily with students from Maryland and West Virginia and DC, uh, but I do interact with all of our students regardless of where they're coming from. Uh, and I'm really excited to be able to share GW with y'all. Um, so a little bit more about myself. I'm also a GW alumna, so I do know a bit about the student life and culture there. Um, and I'm happy to speak to that. And you'll definitely hear um, my perspective in that sense as we talk for the next couple of minutes here. Um, and I'm gonna be spending the next 20 or 25 minutes talking about uh, GW and student life and the opportunities that we have for all of our students. Um, we'll talk about our campuses. And then of course, we'll talk about the admissions process um, as that's the main thing that I talk about. Um, so we'll definitely be delving into all of that. And so, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know and I'll try and answer them, but we'll also have some Q&A at the end um, that we can engage with each other on there too. So I'm going to start sharing my screen probably. Let's see. Yes. Um, and I want to show you guys a really cool tool that we have and it's our virtual map. It allows you to see more of what our campus looks like. Um, and so we're going to start with a bird's eye view. And so we are in the heart of Washington, DC. Uh, we take up about a five by six block campus um, in the middle of the Foggy Bottom neighborhood. And so we are located around a lot of really cool, um, really famous and well-known sites, such as the Watergate Complex, which does have a hair and nail salon that offers a 15% student discount um, for any student that wants to utilize their services. And it's right next to the Kenny Center for Performing Arts. I love the Kenny Center. It's where students can go and anybody has access to seeing free shows every evening at 6 p.m. And so you can go and experience art and culture, but on a college student budget. It's also where you can see bigger name performances such as Hamilton, um, Mean Girls even premiered here before it was shown on Broadway. Uh, so you have a lot of opportunities to engage with the arts and culture scene, but at the same time, they have a roof that's open until midnight every night of the week, as long as it's not too windy. Um, and that roof offers 360 degree views of Washington DC for free. Um, and there are picnic tables up there. And so it's such a cool space um, that our students will utilize to grab a pizza, bring it with them and have a picnic on the roof of the Kenny Center. And over here we have what I like to call GW's backyard, uh, which is commonly known as the National Mall. And this will definitely be a part of your student experience. Um, this is where you'll go maybe to practice with your ultimate Frisbee team or with your rugby team. Um, this is where you'll go to do some homework on the back of the Lincoln. This might be where you go to be a part of a march that's happening at DC. Um, but regardless of what your four years look like, it's going to culminate with you and all of your classmates standing and sitting underneath the Washington Monument because this is where we host graduation and commencement. Uh, we're the only school that's allowed to do so. Um, and it's a really cool and monumental moment for all of our students to be able to sit on the National Mall looking up at the Washington Monument and reflect on their time at GW. And then of course, we wouldn't be Washington DC without the White House. Uh, this is an institution that we hope you interact with in some way, shape or form while you're at GW. And that could be um, to walk by and take a picture on your way to continuing to explore the city. That could be to do an internship inside the White House and it could be to do a protest outside of the White House. Um, really how you interact with it is up to you, but it is a really important part of our city that we hope you get to know further while you're with us. And then for our students who are interested in business, uh, we have the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund right across the street from our campus. Um, and these are going to be places where when you start to think about internships and what those look like, you'll really be able to interact with while you are a GW student. Um, in fact, I have run into Christina De La Garde, who is the um, leader of the World Bank in our campus Whole Foods. Um, so you're really able to get to know not only these buildings, um, but the people that work inside of them. So it's really cool resources that we have, again, just a block away from our campus. And so we're going to zoom in on our Froggy Bottom campus, which is our main campus. Um, and normally we start by talking about the Marvin Center because it's where our admissions office is. Um, it's kind of a student hub on campus. It has the Panera Bread. It has practice spaces for students who are interested in theater and dance. Um, it has a couple of other different classroom spaces. Um, so it really is a place where students can go and study or eat with their friends. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities within there. Um, and then going out of that, 
there are a lot of different opportunities as well. So I'm gonna highlight in this green color all of our different residence halls. Um, so we do ask students to live on campus for the first three years that they're at GW. Um, and then your fourth year, you're able to have that be a year where you live on campus or off campus, that's up to you. Um, but one of the reasons why we do this is because we really want to be intentional about building community. Being a city school, it can be a little bit harder for students to feel that sense of community or that sense of campus because our campus looks very different than many other universities around the world. And so we want to make sure that students do feel that sense of um, kinship, that sense of community. And we think a lot of that happens through students living together. Um, and so students will live in our residence halls for those first three years, as I said, um, and then the optional senior year if they want to. And there are residence halls, they're not all clumped together. They really are spread out around campus. So if you want to live in 1959 Inch Street, you can do that and then take some of your classes right next door to you at the Elliott School building. Um, I will also mention that right next to this building is also a Starbucks, um, which makes your life a lot easier um, if you want to quick go to Starbucks on your way to going to class. Um, but you'll find that of a lot of our campus buildings. Some students prefer to um, live in Madison Hall because it's right across the street from the library and they know that that's where they're going to be spending a lot of their time. And I'll also mention that our library is a 24-7 hour library, so you can really access it whenever you feel like you need to. But students enjoy living on campus. Um, oftentimes they have access to a kitchen. It might be in their room or it might be on their floor, um, but there is a kitchen that you'll have access to and you'll have a microwave and a fridge in your room as well when you move in, as well as air conditioning and heating, um, just to make sure that you can settle in. DC has heat, it has humidity, and it has snow. So you definitely need air conditioning and heating year round. Um, and then I also want to mention the fact that our dining plan is pretty non-traditional. Um, it's an open dining plan and it's one that allows our students to access the different kinds of food opportunities that are available across campus. Um, so you can use your dining card, um, which is your student ID, and it has money that's loaded on it every semester. Um, it's money that you pay for when you're paying for housing and things like that. Um, and so you're able to use it at places like CVS and Whole Foods and Safeway to buy groceries. You're able to use it at Chipotle and at Chick-fil-A and at Pete's Coffee to buy um, snacks and food. You're able to use it at really nice sit-down restaurants. So if you want to take your parents out for dinner when they come and visit you, you can use your G-Roll card to do that. Um, but one of the things I think is the best part about it is not only do our students really have access to lots of different kinds of food and they're able to tap into the culture of the international city that is Washington, D.C., but they're also all on the same playing field. So you know that you and your roommates have the exact same money on your Giro card. And so if you want to go out for a really nice meal to celebrate your birthday, you can do that and not worry about how finances are going to play out because you have that Giro card. Um, so it's a really great way for our students to be able to, you know, hang out, eat with each other, um, buy meals, and then also have food delivered. Um, you can have food delivered through your Giro card You'll always see um, the Domino's moped riding up to uh, the library to deliver students pizza at two in the morning um, in the middle of finals week, potentially. So a lot of opportunities there. Um, and so as I mentioned, Foggy Bottom is just one of our two campuses that students will live on during their first year. The other is our Mount Vernon campus. Now this is where you're going to get a lot of that green space that you would see in a traditional liberal arts environment. Um, so this is where we have our red brick building, our tennis courts, our softball field, um, and it's where about a third of our first year students will live. Um, it's largely just for first year students. Um, they make up 99% of the students that live on the Mount Vernon campus. Uh, the other 10 per, or the other 1% is going to be your resident advisors and then any other faculty that might be living here um, to help students get to know what it's like to be a professor at a university and different things like that. And so students will have the option to decide where they want to live during their first year. Um, the way that I kind of think about whether or not you should live on Foggy Bottom or Mount Vernon is what kind of student are you and what kind of residential environment do you want to be in? Some of our students are ready to move directly from their home into the middle of the city. They are accustomed to the sounds of ambulances all night um, or they want to live in residence halls where there are going to be hundreds of other students for them to get to know. Others of our students, they want that quieter, more transitional first year on campus. Um, they want to live in a residence hall that only has 40 students total, um, and they want to get to know every single student that they're living with. Um, and so they choose to live on the Mount Vernon campus, or they want to be a part of one of our living and learning communities. 
Um, our living and learning communities are programs that span just during your first year on campus um, and they are all centered around different academic points and so we have one like women's leadership program we have a program called politics and values we have one about sustainability and about making global connections um, so really cool ways to engage with your first year take a seminar course um, both semesters with students in those programs alongside you um, and you live with them as well so again it's that living and learning community that we're forming and those are all housed on the Mount Vernon campus. So that would be the other reason why you might want to live there. Um, but regardless, you're able to get back and forth between the two of them really easily. Um, there is a shuttle bus that runs 24 seven every five minutes during academic hours, um, every 10 to 15 minutes outside of academic hours. Um, it's free, it's about a 15 minute ride, and it has charging outlets as well as leather seats and Wi-Fi. So you can always be connected um, regardless of if you're on Foggy Bottom, Mount Vernon, or in transition. I'll also add that West Hall has uh, is not only a residence hall, but it also has our only dining hall um, at GW. Like I said, we have an open meal plan, um, but we do have our one traditional dining hall here on the Vern. That's where you can um, get your all you care to eat style experience. Um, they also have brunch every Sunday. Um, it's probably the most popular brunch on campus. It's the best brunch deal in DC. Um, and again, it's all you can eat. So you can go and stay and study and eat and study and eat for as long as you need to. Um, it, this also has a recording studio. So if you are interested in dropping your next mixtape, um, you can use the facilities in West Hall to do so. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about what our student experience is like, and I'm going to use the help of a presentation just to kind of guide this. And so our campus is a medium sized institution. So we have 10 and a half thousand undergraduate students um, spanning from all 50 states and 130 different countries. And so we really want our campus to be the place where students are able to meet people who are not only from their communities, but who are from communities that are vastly different than theirs and really help to expand their perspective about what the world looks like and who, what kind of people are in there. Um, in addition to that, once you're part of the GW community, you're always a part of that. We have a really large alumni network, um, 90,000 of which live in the Washington DC area. And so as we will uh, talk about in a few moments, when we think about internships and research, you're not just limited to the on-campus community, but you have alums who really want to impart experiences with you um, and learning opportunities with you. And they're going to do that and they're going to do it easily because they live in the same city that you do. Um, and then we try and emphasize smaller class sizes, which you'll definitely be able to be in um, during your first year, but through all four years, you'll have small classes every single semester. There are a lot of opportunities too, where if you want to take like intro to economics, you might have the option to take it as a large lecture or take it as a small classroom style, just depending on the way that you choose that you want to learn. Um, so we really think that it's important for our students to be able to choose their educational path. And that looks, um, has a lot of different ways that it looks on our campus, and we'll talk about that too. Um, but as I mentioned, our students are living on campus, um, in our residence halls, in our living and learning communities. They're eating all around over 100 different options, spanning from sit-down restaurants to um, fast casual to grocery stores. Um, and then when it comes to academics, you will have a lot of options. Around 50% of our students are pursuing an additional major or an additional minor. And that's because we really emphasize the fact that if you want to have a major in the Elliott School of International Affairs, go for it. But if you find that there's something else that you want to study academically that pairs really well with your major, we want you to have the opportunity to pursue that as well. College is the only time when you get to take your academic interests and learn everything you can about them. And we wanna make sure that you're able to do so and that you have a fluid enough schedule that even if you don't wanna have an additional major or a minor, you can take those extra classes and really round out your educational experience in a way that's going to be very different than the person sitting next to you in your intro course. Um, your path at GW is truly your path. You get to decide what that looks like um, and how that's shaped. And a lot of that is through your academic experience. Experiences. We do have seven different schools and colleges that you can be a part of. You can have majors across them. Um, in fact, our business school actually requires you to have a minor outside of the business school. Um, so again, because they think it's important that you have the interdisciplinary learning, despite the fact that you're a business school student, maybe you'll be studying marketing and you'll be studying psychology um, or marketing and communications and really pairing your different interests together. 
there's lots of different ways that you'll be able to interact with your studies and with your professors through being a student at GW. And then when we start to talk about student life and what that looks like, um, we are a D1 school, part of the Atlantic 10 conference. And so if you want to play a sport, um, you can be recruited for that. Or if you just want to watch sports, you definitely will have the opportunity to do so. We have, it feels like every sport except for football. Um, there's simply not space in Washington, D.C. for a football field, um, unless we really were to take the National Mall and call it our own. Um, so we don't have football, but we have everything else. And then we also have over 500 different student organizations. Um, and these organizations span from being faith-based, we have 23 different faith-based organizations on our campus, um, to being service organizations. We have about 30% of our student population engages in some form of Greek life. Um, and that can be what you think of, your traditional sorority or fraternity, that can be engaging in members of um, service specific organizations. We have a co-ed um, community service fraternity. We have a community service sorority. We have a few chapters of the Divine Nine. Um, we also have community or um, co-ed fraternities that are around different academic interests. We have a pre-law fraternity. So you really are able to, if you want to engage in Greek life, do it in a couple of different ways that also align with what your passions are outside of the academic classroom setting. Um, we also have student organizations around knitting and around dancing. Uh, there are so many different ways that you'll be able to get to know the people on our campus and find that you have something in common with so many different people through joining these different student organizations. Um, in addition to that, we encourage our students to do things like going abroad. So almost 50% of our students will study abroad during their time at GW. And study abroad might look different depending on who you are, what your path is, what you want your graduation timeline to be. If you want to graduate in three years versus four versus five. Um, if you're an engineering student versus if you are an English major, um, your study abroad experiences are all going to look different. But we do have over 300 different programs that you can be a part of. Um, and these range from GW locations or GW taught um, facilities in Madrid to um, doing a exchange program and living with a family in Chile. Um, you can go to any continent except for Antarctica. Um, that's the one caveat there. Um, we are trying to get a program in Antarctica, but given you know the fact that we're currently in a pandemic, that's a little slow going right now. Um, but once our, we're able to send students abroad again, they will have the opportunity to go all across the world and all, for all different lengths of time. Um, so students can go abroad for just their spring break or just the winter break. They can go abroad for up to a semester, up to a year and a half. Um, that's called our Global Bachelor's Program. You start with your cohort in either Shanghai or New Zealand, and then you get to choose two other places you want to go from there. Um, so a really cool program for our students who are really internationally focused. Um, and then we again emphasize things like community service. I know I've said the word community like 20 plus times at this point, but I say it because it is so important for us that you get to know the people around you and that you invest in them and you allow them to invest back in you. Um, and some of the ways we do that is through community service with the different partnerships we've created around Washington, DC. Um, so we have students that will go into different elementary schools and work through a program called Jumpstart and they'll work with tutoring. We'll have students who will do community service as part of their academic class experience where they're in a service learning course and they're in a GB classroom two days of the week. And then that third day, they're working in a soup kitchen or they're working with an organization like Lemonade DC. Um, so they really are trying to get to know people who are in more neighborhoods than just our Foggy Bottom neighborhood, but all across the different eight wards of Washington DC. And we really try and emphasize this from day one that you're on campus. And so as part of orientation, we do welcome day of service um, where you're able to come alongside the people who are in your resident hall, um, your resident advisor as well, and you will serve as your little mini living community in the larger DC area. And you'll really get to know people who have lived in DC for their entire lives and what their experiences have been. Um, and you will get to know more of DC than just campus during that first week on campus. So it's something that's really important to us and something that we emphasize every single year. And of course, our location, location, location. Um, it's something we love to talk about because it does have such a big impact on our students. Um, this is where our students will be able to pursue those internships during their academic semesters. Um, some students will graduate from GW having done six different internships during their time because they want to pick a new one every single semester. Um, and there are so many different benefits to doing your internship and doing your research during the academic semester. Um, one of which is the fact that you then get to have the resources of your professors 
years um, to either help recommend you to different internship or research opportunities, um, but also help you during that. Maybe you're talking about something in your internship that's a little bit over your head or you don't have a lot of information on it. So you can go to your professor and ask them for additional resources or ask them to help you better understand this thing that concept that you're working on. But on the flip side, you're able to go to your internship manager, your coordinator, or your supervisor and say, hey, we talked about this in class. How would I apply that within this setting? How is this going to be helpful for me in this environment? And really have that back and forth and be able to use what you're learning in your internship and utilize it in your academic classroom and vice versa. So there are a lot of really great ways that doing internship during your academic semester is going to be really helpful. And you can work with your academic advisor and our career services center to make sure that you're able to manage all of that. So a lot of students will take their classes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then do their internship on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Or they'll spend um, Monday, like Monday through Thursday, every morning in class and every afternoon in the lab doing research. One of my favorite um, research labs we have right now is one I recently learned about which is a parasitology lab um, where they're studying parasites um, through using beagle puppies. Um, so really fascinating stuff, something that I would never choose to do. Um, and I have been told that no animals are harmed in the making of this research, but something that is really interesting to some of our students here on campus and something that they're able to do as undergraduate students. Um, research isn't something that's just limited to our seniors. We have first year students that will do research, um, but it's also not something that's limited to our science seeking students. So we have students that are in our business school that will do research and international affairs that will do research. Um, we had a PhD candidate who was studying social injustices in America who ended up being really interested in the Miss Black America beauty pageant system. She ended up entering the pageant and she ended up winning the pageant all as part of her research. Of course, her research was not um, structured on her needing to win, but it was a really nice bonus for her to graduate from GW with her PhD and also with a crown. Um, so lots of ways that our students are taking their academic interests and their social passions and really intertwining those together to create experiences that are unique to them. And so that also leads to real tangible graduation outcomes, um, such as being able to go on to a job and know that you're going to be really competent and really confident within their job environment. Um, earning money so that you can uh, grant, being given grant money that allows you to travel to your internship or have lunch during your internship that you don't have to worry about the finances for. Uh, so there are a lot of different opportunities that come with being a GBU student, as we've been talking about. And then lastly, that admissions process. What does that look like? Um, so we are a Common App exclusive institution, which means that you will apply to us through the Common Application, which is a online web-based platform that allows you to apply to schools all across the US and to other schools selectively in different countries. Um, and so you'll use that to submit to us four different pieces and then one thing that's optional. So we will see your transcript, which is the list of all the classes you've taken in high school and the grades that you received on those. Um, that will just help us have a sense of how did high school go for you? What kinds of courses were you interested in? Where did you excel? What was really exciting for you about your academic process within your high school curriculum? We do get a handout from your high school that tells us what kinds of classes you've had the opportunity to take. So if you have the opportunity to take AP classes or IB classes or honors classes, we will expect you to have taken some of those because we know that students who have a more rigorous course load in high school will do really well in the GVU environment. If your school does not offer any of those, do not worry. Um, we're not going to hold that against you because again, we get that handout that lets us know what we should be looking for. We're also going to be looking at your essays. You'll write one for common application and one for us. They are your voice. Use it to let us know who you are, what your interests are, what you're excited about in terms of life. If there's something that's happened to you that you wanna share with us, do so. If there's something that you get really excited about, tell us about it, um, but make sure that that essay stays central to you, who you are, and what you'll bring to our campus. Uh, the third thing that we're gonna be looking at are your activities. What have you been involved with um, during your time in high school? And this can be anything that you feel like you've meaningfully invested in. So this could be religious organizations. This could be doing cross country. Maybe you hate running, but you've been doing cross country anyways. Tell us about it. Um, this could be being um, on stage for theater productions or backstage. Uh, this could be working a job. Maybe you are a caretaker for someone in your family. And so that's what you do. You go to school, you come home and you take care of someone. Please let us know. We want to know what you've been doing when you haven't been in a high school classroom learning things. Um, so use the activities sheet to let us 
about these things. And the last thing we're looking at across the board are your recommendation letters. Um, one will come from a college counselor, the other will come from a teacher or a manager or someone who knows you really well and can speak to what you're like and who you're like. They help round out your application and they help us get to know you just a little bit better. Now that fifth component that I mentioned was optional are your standardized testing scores. We are a test optional institution. So if you do not want to submit your test scores, you do not have to. And that does not weigh in on whether or not we think you're a good student because you didn't submit your test scores. We know that students don't submit for a variety of reasons. For some students, it's financial. For some students, it's they just want to test the system. Um, for other students, it's that they don't like the scores that they got on their tests. Um, we aren't going to hold that against you. We're not going to judge you. About 30% of our applicant pool does choose to go test optional, so you will not be the only one doing so. Um, and that choice is really up to you. And you'll make that on the common application, and they'll say, are you going to submit, yes or no? And we will hold you to whatever you say once you've submitted your application. In terms of application deadlines, we are an early decision, regular decision school. Early decision is just a binding agreement saying you love GW and if you are admitted, you will be coming to GW in the fall, um, regardless of what other schools you might be interested in or regardless of what that financial aid package looks like. It's saying if I could be at GW tomorrow, I would be. Those are students that we recommend going early decision. If you have any doubts about GW or maybe you want to apply to a different like a variety of schools, maybe it's that you want to be able to compare financial aid packages apply regular decision. It's going to be the best choice for you and for your family. We accept around 70% of our students from the regular decision pool. And so you'll have definitely um, a great chance either way. Um, we just want to see strong students. Um, and so then in terms of paying for GW, which you know we always need to talk about, um, you will be automatically considered for merit-based scholarship. And that can be anywhere from $5,000 to $25,000. It's renewable every single year, as long as you maintain a 2.0 GPA while you're at GW. Yep, 2.0. We know that sounds really low, but it's really intentional. Um, we want to make sure that you're able to pursue academic success while you're at GW and really try classes that you're interested in and really push yourself there. We don't want you to be worried about, okay, if I take this class and I don't get an A, I might lose my scholarship. We want to alleviate that fear, which is why we set it at a 2.0. On the flip side, we have the actual financial aid process, um, and you will submit the FAFSA, the CSS profile, and various tax returns, and our financial aid office will look over all of those documents and present you with a financial aid package that they think complements the amount of money you'll be able to put towards GW and um, fill the rest of that gap as much as they can with grant money, scholarship money, um, potentially federal work study, and then potentially loans just to fill any remaining gap. You never have to take loans. That's a choice that you get to make, but it might be presented to you as part of your financial aid package, just as an option, again, to fill in whatever remaining gap may be left. Grant money is money that you do not have to be back to the institution. It's money that is given to us um, from, it could be donors, it could be alums, um, and different things like that. And so that's what your financial aid package will look like. And that is going to be the last little bit for me. Um, I see there was a question in the chat. So I'm gonna stop sharing so I can view that uh, easily. Um, but if you do have any more questions, you'll be given my information um, at the wrap up of this program in a few days. Um, but feel free to contact either me or our office as a whole. Um, we are working a call center right now, nine to five, Monday through Friday, Eastern time. Um, and it's staffed by staff and students. So you can always call if you want to talk to a student or you want to talk to a professional staff member, you can definitely do that. But thank y'all for listening. Re, thank you so much. That was such a thorough and enthusiastic and really fun presentation of your campus. I love that story about the student who won the beauty pageant. What an awesome side benefit to your academic career. I know it blows my it blew my mind the first time I heard it. And then when I looked further into it and like really started to think of like I looked into her research, of course. And I was just so impressed by the level of research and level of work she did. Um, to pull that off, all while being a PhD student, which is a lot of work. <laughs> Very impressive. Maybe um, she was also undercover FBI, like that movie with Sandra Bullock. Miss <laughs> Congeniality? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, thank you again. We did have a question in the chat um, about whether or not disclosing a disorder, like a learning difference or maybe a mental health 
um, issue in your essays or application if that could hinder a student's chances of getting accepted? Yeah, so that would not hinder the student's abilities. We really use those essays to get a sense of who the student is and what their life has been like, um, but we don't use that, any content of that essay to determine whether or not they should be getting in. It's much more about getting to know the student, um, getting to evaluate their writing abilities. So please use full sentences and grammar and things like that, because that makes much more of an impact. Um, but you're definitely able to disclose if you want to or don't if you don't feel the need to. Um, and we have had students who have shared very personal information with us through those essays and that does stay with whoever reads them. Amazing, thank you. So I'm excited to bounce it over to Haley and Adina who are gonna share with us um, what the particular lens of being a Jewish student on campus is like. Obviously that's how we're exploring um, all of these schools and so, I mean, Haley, please feel free to also comment on your life as a student generally, but I know you are a leader within um, the Hillel experience, and I'm sure we'd love to hear about that as well. So I'll bounce it to you guys. Feel free to go off of each other, or, you know, I think, uh, Haley, if you want to share a little bit first, and then we can pass it over to Adina, whatever you guys are comfortable with. Please continue to use the chat uh, for any questions you might have, and we'll also have a verbal Q&A um, at the end of our hour together. Haley. Sure, so I'm Haley, my name is Haley Waldman. Um, I'm from Central New Jersey and I'm gonna be a sophomore in the fall. Um, so I'm majoring in public health with minors in public policy and business administration. Um, I'm pretty, uh, played a big part in Hillel. I interned there this June. Um, and then I'm going to be an engagement intern, which they call UJUs, um, in the in the next in the next year. So I pretty much work with engaging freshmen on campus. So I'm super super excited for that. And then obviously it's like a once a year experience. So whenever you guys come to GW, you'll have different UJUs. But they're, it's a great program that they run. Um, really recommend looking into Hello um, and being a part of that because it's super super incredible. Um, so for Halal, we have Shabbat dinners, which are super fun. I love when we get Shuk, which is our vegan Israeli uh, food place, or food uh, in DC. It's amazing. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So whenever, those, whenever they cater, you get a ton of students who come to eat the food because it's amazing. I love it so much. And we also have a JLF program. So this is the Jewish Learning Fellowship. And it's super cool. It's like 10 to 15 people pretty much who discusses once a week about Jewish um, issues and values. So mine was in the spring and we talked about social justice and it was super cool to see how like our Jewish values lead us to be good human beings overall with, like the Kunalam and repairing the world and everything. So I really, really enjoyed that. Um, so besides Hillel, I'm also involved in GW for Israel and I'm also involved in Greek life on that. I was also an engineering student for a semester. I transferred, or I switched my major. Um, so I was really involved with an engineering organization on campus, which I'm not a part of anymore because I'm out of engineering. Um, I also knew that GW was a perfect school for me because I did early decision. Um, I knew I wanted a city school and GW was amazing because of the location and the access to internships I really liked. And it's such a political school, but I knew going into GW, I didn't really want to uh, major in like uh, political, in like public or um, political science. Wow. I knew I didn't want to major in political science, but I wanted to figure out how to relate it to my other interests. So I knew going to DC and GW would just allow me to explore that further as I'm now decided to minor in public policy. Um, GW is amazing. As Brie was saying, internships are a really big part of it. And so the students are super, super driven. And it's super cool because you get to talk to people of all different majors and all different interests. And it like really opens my eyes because last year my sweet mate, um, super interested in comedy and actually took part in a stand-up comedy club, which is super cool. Not something that I'm interested in at all, but I went to support her and I'm like, this is super, super cool. And so you find people of different interests just being there and just like willing to share everything and you get to learn so much about it. Um, yeah, I don't know if Adina would like to say something about Halal or I could keep going, um, but that's kind of a quick overview of my experience. Amazing. Thank you, Haley. Perfect. 
Um, I will jump in briefly. So good to not see you off. So if you do, I'm we're in the people business here at Hillel. So if you want to chime in, put your face on the screen, I would love to see you and connect um, more than just speaking into the uh, atmosphere. Um, we I'm next week is my 10th year on campus at GW. It's a popping community, very much culturally connected. It's not a particularly religious community, um, huge Jewish community, right? So you feel like even if you do absolutely nothing overtly Jewish for your whole time there, you still feel like there are a lot of Jews around, right? So like when it's Passover, you might be like, oh, where'd you get your matzo, right? There's a constant conversation happening about Jewish culture, Jewish community, and how it plays a role um, in our students' lives. Um, I want to share two brief things with you kind of to help you understand how we think about Jewish life at GW. Um, so the first is, um, this is our magical equation, if you can see here. Okay, so why do I share that with you? Um, this is how we think about all of our work at GW Hillel. We want to think about meeting the moment and infusing Jewish values, and that is our sign of success. So you might have noticed that Haley just spoke about the fact that she took a class Jewish Learning Fellowship. You'll notice she didn't say, and we met every week to talk about the Parsha. Now, don't get me wrong, learning about the Torah, learning about text, it's, it's vital and it's important and I, we obviously value it and still create space for that. But more than that, I wanna understand where is a student right now in their moment, right? What is going on? So you don't have to look very far. In the coming semester, we're dealing with the pandemic. We're dealing with a moment of great change when it comes to racial justice and equity. We're about to elect a new president or the same president, or we're having a big conversation right around election and leadership and all that good stuff. And it's all happening in the heart of our nation's capital. So I would be stupid and not doing my job if I said, oh, let's not talk about that right now, right? Let's say, oh, come and talk about, you know, Shabbat. Let's get in our bubble and not talk about what's happening in the rest of the world and then fling our students back out. We want to talk about how do Jewish values inform the world that you're living in? How are you going to think when you see a headline on the news or on your social media feed, what does Judaism have to say about it? And how can we help you think through a Jewish lens to see um, what's happening in the world? So I want to share with you briefly, um, I could talk all day long, but I think our students actually do a much better job. This brief video, which I'm not going to go too much into it until afterwards, but it really it captures a lot of what's happening right now on campus. So let me briefly. Okay, here we go. The rich tradition of GW Hillel is real. Was that working? Sorry, because I can't see. Give me thumbs up if you. That worked really great. Okay enmeshed with the city that we're living in. The GW Hello building will not only be a space for community and connection for our students, but will also be something that will be used in the heart of downtown Washington, D.C. by the Jewish community at large. <laughs> This new space is just going to open up opportunities for students to practice Judaism in their own way. For me, GW Hillel is another like aspect of my Jewish identity. I'm not alone in this field. The strong foundation supports what I'm real. Hey, and I don't know what I'd be without it. Vision cloudy, mind overcrowded. Feet on earth, not ground. It used to feel lost in the crowd. The studio lost in the sound. Lift me up and I feel it down. You build me up while I'm building out. Hey. of all Jewish values is learning, tradition, community. The presence of Hillel has added to my college experience at GW. There's a lot to it than just a Shabbat dinner or a Jewish event. It's really a support system. We're all in this together. College is a great time, but not everything's rosy. You need a place where you can come to, where you can feel like you are seen and appreciated and valued and empowered to do good things. A new Hillel is going to be built. We're going to have a brand new building at a prominent place on campus and in Washington, D.C. This new one should be very exciting. We'll be more square footage, more modern. 
It's a fresh start. Having this building is going to make it so that everybody will have this opportunity to come and join us and really form a community that not only exists in spirit but exists in body. A physical space starts to really become the community. It's always present and always developing and always changing. I know my Hillel experience, like it's definitely going to be something that I come back to and think about. Going into school, I didn't think I'd have a lot of friends in Jewish life or at Hillel, but that was totally turned on its head. I really want students to understand that when they get here, that they know that they have a uh, the support, the leadership to take their Jewish values out into the world and to do amazing things. When people invest in GW Hillel, they're investing in a community. But even bigger and more important to me is that they we're investing in Jewish life. We're building up and building out at GW Hillel. Yeah, we are. idea of mitzvot, they're like obligations that you should fulfill, and in the contemporary context, it's good deeds. There's so many good deeds that you can't accomplish without other people. The value of Keila and community goes hand in hand with that. I want every person in our community to find their place by bringing this new building to life. Uh, we now will have a physical marker at a very prominent point on campus for our students and the rest of the Jewish community to call home. <laughs> okay, so I share that with you for three key reasons to represent what we're up to on campus. And number one, it has been a 12 year process, which is hard to fathom, but we are finally opening the doors for our new home um, this fall. So anyone who's looking at GW, you know that you're coming to a space where there's going to be a brand new Hillel. We're going to have rock and food in the building, a space that will really feel like a sense of home and community and waiting for you. So we're so excited about that. I share that number one. Um, number two, a little bit of the backstory on that. Those two students that wrote the song, their names are Noah and Zach. I went to Noah and Zach, who are both insanely talented music, mu musicians, and I said to them, guys, I have this crazy idea. Can you write a song and talk about, like, I don't know, community and a building? That was basically the only prompt that I gave them. And they came back with that, like, insanely beautiful piece of artwork which is illustrative to me of, again, when I'm talking about meeting students where they are, these are two musical guys. Noah is, you know, Noah would say, I love Hillel, I come to Hillel all the time. Zach would say, oh, like I'm a little further away from Hillel. So in my mind, they are both the epitome of a Hillel success story, right? We're meeting them where they are. We're saying, oh, what does Judaism have to do with your music and how can one feed the other? And we're really lifting up their voices in this creative and cool way. Um, and the last thing, most importantly, and I would say this for any school that you're looking at, for any Hillel, the most valuable thing I think a Hillel can provide for you is to really help you feel seen. I know that it is a major challenge to go to college, to transition to a new space, to be away from your family. It comes with a lot of unique questions and challenges. A Hillel worth its weight will say, I see you, let's talk about it. I wanna help you grapple with this holy phase of your life where you're really emerging as this Jewish adult and, and taking all the beautiful things or maybe the challenging things you got from your home growing up and bringing them into a new phase of your life. So that is really how, you know, it's why I've done this work for so long. It's why I believe in it. Um, and I would encourage you when it's very nice to go to campuses or to call up Hillel's and say, can you tell me about BDS and can you tell me about Shabbat dinners and all these things are important conversations. I do not want to downplay them, but I would also say like, tell me about how many students you take out for coffee and what kinds of questions do you ask? These are the things that I really think are really important when it comes to helping Hillel enhance your entire uh, college experience. So with that said, I know we have 10-ish minutes left. If anybody has specific questions for Haley or Bree or myself, we're happy to, to be helpful. You can also continue to use the chat if you're more comfortable that way. That video was awesome. And congrats on your building. What a cool yeah. new extension of the building. 
Could you also talk about, and this is to any of you, could you also share a little bit about just diversity on campus in general and sort of, you know, uh, how that plays out and how Hillel um, is a warm and welcoming space to all different types of people and yeah, Absolutely. more about that. I don't know if Brie wants to give big picture of diversity and then I can talk specifically or Haley can talk specifically about. Yeah. yeah, so we are very open to just outwardly saying we support, especially right now, our black and brown members of our community. And I think looking at like what has been happening for the past few weeks, that's immediately where we go when we think of diversity right now. Um, but I also think that GW has been a very welcoming space, space for people from very different kinds of backgrounds and different kinds of communities that make up diversity. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we have 23 different religious organizations. And I think that is a di as estimation of diversity. Um, we have student organizations that are focused specifically on the LGBTQIA communities. I think that's a representation of diversity. Um, we have students that come from so many different countries and that's a representation of diversity. And so I think we really do our best as, in the admissions to start from you know, ground one, working with high school students who want to be a part of that kind of environment where they're going to be okay with meeting people that don't look like them or don't sound like them or don't have those shared experiences and who are excited to learn about what it's like to come from these different backgrounds and these different environments. Um, so you try and start that from you know ground one and then moving our way forward as students are on campus and interacting with each other creating spaces for that. We even have a, um, so through our Office of Diversity and Inclusion, we have a report form where if you feel like someone has said something um, and you feel like you've experienced a microaggression, you can report it there. And that way to just kind of get it off your chest. And whether that's in regards to your religion or your sexuality or your race or anything like that, you know that someone is going to read that report. And even if you just wanna get it off your chest, you don't wanna think about it again, you know that you've been heard and that there are people there to support you if you do want to go further um, with talking it through that. Um, so there are a lot of ways that we try and support our student body. Right now we're running a really cool program called GW in Solidarity, which talks about being, what's it like to be black on campus? What's it like to be an ally on campus? What's it like to be part of these different communities on our campus? Um, and this is, I think the last week of a four week series. Um, it's been really cool to see so many people from all different areas of GW, whether they're alums or incoming students um, or they work at GW, just be a part of that um, and allow people to hear their voices. So that's, I think, like the big picture, how we're viewing and supporting diversity on campus. Haley, do you have any thoughts you want to share? Um, I mean, Bridge did a really good job of explaining it, but I could just say, like, from experience, like, all of my classes are super, super diverse, so people from everywhere, um, and, like, it's so easy to meet people of different backgrounds and people who don't look like you, which is really super cool just because it, it enhances your academic experience because you're not learning from people like you and talking to people who are just like you. You really get to experience, like, the whole world, and, like, that really is something about GW as a whole that's really, really nice. It's super diverse, and I just really like, like, being able to learn about other people's experiences and really engage in that conversation. Yeah. The only thing I'll add, listen, we, I think we all have work to do to get outside of our bubbles and learn more from the other, so to speak, and understand where others are coming from. Um, I'm really proud of the relationship we have with the Multicultural Student Services Center on campus to try to understand, listen, there's some things that we share and there are also some challenges in terms of how each of our communities are perceived on campus and what struggles they have. Um, we work closely with them. We also work very closely, ironically, with not ironically, but we take advantage of being in Washington, D.C., and we have a close relationship for the past few years with some folks at Howard, where, for example, we do a Passover Seder each year that's a Black Jewish Seder where we're learning from one another. Um, I, I did see also the question with Hayden um, in the chat. The question was, how does the university handle anti-Semitic and anti-LGBT incidents? Um, I would say of all the things I'm proud of, our relationship with the university as a, as a true partner is um, some Hillel's are employees of the university, some Hillel's are their own independent 501c3. We happen to be an independent entity, but we're incredibly close with the university. Um, and there have, been, there have been uphill battles this year. There have been some challenges, but we always have the doorway open. And part of our, you know, I'm speaking with, I, I speak with the president on a regular basis. We're chatting on the phone on Tuesday, actually. 
Um, and one challenge for him, I think, is that GW is an amazing partner of the Jewish community. He has made his own donation to this capital campaign. There is so much happening beyond Hillel. There's a Mayberg Center for Leadership for Jewish Education and Leadership. There's the I Center. There's amazing partnerships with Israeli universities. Um, there's a ton going on Judaically, but I don't think GW is actually doing a very good job of, of kind of telling that story and selling it. So one conversation that we've been having on an ongoing basis is how do you not just tell the story of this anti-Semitic thing happened? How do you also say, let me tell you about this thriving Jewish life at GW that maybe we aren't talking about enough? So, yeah. Important to share both sides of that narrative, definitely. Well, other questions from folks? This is your chance. Often we have students who will ask about um, mental health resources on campus. I know that's a, a big thing on students' minds, especially transitioning back to the rigors of academic life after this pandemic. And maybe you can share a little bit about what those resources look like. So we do have a student health center that does both sides of things. So if you need to go get your flu shot, you can, um, but if you also find that you are in need of any kind of counseling, you can access that as well. Um, students have a certain amount of free uh, mental health counseling sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions that they can access during the year. Um, I think they're every semester you get a certain amount of free ones. Um, and then after those ones are over, you will meet with the counselor to talk about what your next steps are. And if that's continuing counseling through GW or finding another provider in the DC area. Um, but in addition to that, they offer group counseling um, that is free no matter how many times you go. Um, and that's available for all students and they tend to be centered around different topics. So if you're going through um, a death in the family, you can go to their sessions on that um, or just depending on what um, you're really working through. And so they try and offer those up. There is a student support hotline um, that I think is every like Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and Sunday evening until like two or three in the morning where you can call and talk to a peer who is trained on talking through um, counseling and some mental health issues. And so you can use that way, especially if you want that peer-to-peer -peer engagement. Um, and then there, I know our mental health services right now are working to provide telehealth help to our students regardless of where they are across the world right now. Um, and then they'll also do like group sessions um, and different topics and tackle different issues um, throughout the whole year and have different almost seminars. Um, they'll give out free goodies. They take over Kogan Plaza sometimes, which is very centrally located in the middle of our campus. Um, so we definitely have mental health resources um, and they have a long list of providers as well if you want to see someone consistently outside of the GW system. Cool, thanks. And then the last question I'll ask that we often get from, from students, this doesn't seem to be a particularly vocal group, but often people will ask about denominational diversity within the Jewish community on campus. And will I feel comfortable as an Orthodox student at GW? Can I access kosher food? You know, what if I grew up in Nifty my entire life and I really want that experience to continue? Are those options available to me? Yeah, I'll just say briefly and then I'm sure Haley can chime in. Um, historically, we, and I'll share also that I come from an observant space and um, have taken advantage of kind of observant life downtown. Now I live a little further off campus, but um, we have not had a huge observant community on campus. It just has not been an attractive space for students. And what I found is part of the reason is that they say, oh, there's no kosher food on campus. Well, number one, DC does not have a ton of kosher food in downtown Washington. But I also would say that for those who, are, who do lean observant, um, because of this new building, we're gonna have kosher food in the Hillel. So I actually think that that's gonna probably be a tipping point for us to grow our observant community. Um, with that said, we have a very large reform and conservative um, student body and also just unaffiliated who feel very strongly that they're Jewish but don't necessarily want to put themselves in a box. Um, and the last thing I'd say on that topic is really that um, I love when people come and say, oh, I was Nifty Supergirl or I was BBYO. You know, it's awesome. Don't get me wrong. But also our, our challenge and I feel our job is to say, you know, it, you might be thirsty for that camp experience or that youth group experience. And that's a beautiful thing. How can we figure out? Because unfortunately, you know, you can't go backwards. You got to go forwards. So how can we help you really think critically about what was so important to you about that experience and how can you help to recreate it for yourself while you're here on campus and also beyond, right? I don't want you to so immerse yourself 
in a very kind of box way of being Jewish that you graduate and say, oh, I don't have Shabbat dinner to go to at Hillel anymore. I guess I can't do Shabbat. I want you to feel like, no, you invite friends over, you get pizza and a bottle of wine if that's the way you want to roll and you create a Shabbat space for yourself. So I really want to help you have the tools you need to live your own Jewish life far beyond any, you know, organizational life that you've been, that you've been blessed to have access to. Awesome. Yeah. So time is on the horizon. Go ahead, Haley. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, I was going to say, Adina and like the rest of Halal just have done such a good job with like trying to create your community. Um, I went to URJ camps, so, like reform. Um, I never really did Nifty, but obviously I know what it is. And BYO, um, and just like the community that they have created on campus is so similar to like the Jewish community from camp. And it's, it's so nice to be able to find people who share some of the values and want to engage in Jewish life, no matter what your denomination is. Um, we do have a pretty good uh, portion of reform and conservative, um, but it's just, it's the community's there. And if you're missing that from camp, it, you could definitely come to GW Hillel and find it. Awesome. I was just saying, you know, just to piggyback off Adina, it's a wonderful time to sort of expand your Jewish horizons and all your horizons in general, which brings me to our close. You know, I, I get to sit in these conversations um, from a totally unbiased perspective. And so I often like to, to end by saying, you know, we heard some amazing um, stories and narrative about, a, about this particular campus. And I hope that for many of you, um, GW makes your list. It seems like a wonderful place to spend four years. And I know that this is a time that can feel overwhelming and this is one of the big you know the first really big decisions that you make as a young person you know for yourself and your future and um whether it's GW or, or somewhere else you know I, I like to remind people that your campus experience is going to be what you make it and uh you bring yourself and all your various facets uh with you when you head to college um as Adina says trust your gut because you'll end up where exactly you're supposed to and uh, I couldn't put it better to myself. And uh, we thank you for joining us tonight and for learning and listening about this amazing school. Um, and the road trip continues for another few days. So hopefully you'll join us to hear about a few more. But you can follow uh, Four From Baltimore, which is the number four um, on all of our socials. You'll get, you can get access to the other 20 some odd schools that we have profiled and uh, heard from throughout the road trip um, if you missed them. Um, and we are so grateful to Bree and Adina and Haley. Thank you for sharing your experience with us and um, why this is such a wonderful place to continue your academic and career and, and social life and Jewish life. Um, so thank you all so much, and we'll be passing on all the contact information in case you want to follow up. Have a great night, everyone. Bye.